give you a, just a, a, a really coarse overview of what's important about uh, um, gold deposits in Ontario and also to Quebec. But what you're looking at here is we're, we're sitting down. Uh, um, let me just get all my, uh, my my bearings here on this map. What we have here is the Kirkland Lake uh, area. This where my finger is, Kirkland Lake. And then we have uh, an area where we're going to go. Uh, I got a pen, maybe be easier to point it out. So there's Kirkland Lake, and it lies uh, along a major structure, which is the Cadillac um, Lard Lake Break. Um, and there's another major break, which you've probably heard of, which which Timmins lies along or nearby, is the Porcupine Duster Break. Both these breaks come together over on the Quebec side. And you get right over to where, where Valdor is. So all along these breaks, these major breaks, both the Timmins Porcupine Duster Break and the Cadillac uh, Lard Lake Break, which goes right down to Metachuan, gets uh, our gold bearing structures and splays off of those structures, those major structures, also are gold bearing. For example, Kirkland Lake isn't on the Lard Lake Break, but it's on a splay, the Kirkland Lake Main Break or the Amalgamated Break, which are uh, important. Uh, the only w ones that are right on the breaks are things like uh, Canadian Malartic, right near the break at, over on Malartic on the Quebec side. Um, uh, Caradison in, in Virginia Town, right on the right on the Lard Lake Break. Green Carbonate, right on the Lard Lake Break. And Kearns in, near, near, Virginia, near Virginia Town. 10 million ounce producer. Kirkland Lake, probably in the 40 million ounce producers. Um, Small splays that come off near Adobe, which is the Upper Canada, and the Beaver Upper Beaver Mines, splays off the Lard Lake Break, um, all the way across over to Matachuan, which is very close to the, the break. But then, what happens here when you're coming out to where, where we are, um, in in uh, McMurchie and uh, um, Leonard and Terrell, um there's this break gets buried over by this brown looking rock on this map, which is the cobalt sedimentary terrain. Anyway, long and short of it, it comes through. And the next part of that break that we see is way over here in the Swayze belt. Uh, this break, which we think is the continuation of the Lord Lake break, it looks like it. And, it. and it would come up north of where we are on this property. It gets offset with a whole series of structures that are coming up on a northwest Wet northern, northerly trend and the northwest trend. They get broken up and the, and the lithologies in the Archean are getting shoved around a bit. Just like a deck of cards being shoved around if you took your fingers underneath the deck of cards. These breaks are moving this stuff forward or up in orientations that uh, we don't see a continuous line of it. We don't see the continuous line. And you can see the relationship of how that would look when you look over here in the Swayze belt. These structures are offsetting that belt of Archean volcanics. Same thing on the on uh, in through here when you're coming towards Metachuan, it's getting offset. Same thing along any of these major breaks. All this structural readjustment of the breaks of those Archean structures are getting offset by north-south, northwest the trending uh, structures that are cross-cutting. So we have lots of splays coming off these uh, major breaks. The Porcupine Dester and the Curtain Lake and the Lard Lake uh, 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 Cadillac Lard Lake Break. These, these come together over on the Quebec side just before um, 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 Malartic and over by the big Agnico Laron deposit. But they've, they've done some geo uh, physics across that, those breaks, uh, looking at deep uh, um, um, transects. And they think that maybe these two breaks are somewhat at depth come together. They've come together on surface this way. We don't we don't know what happens with, as they go this way. Timmins going from past Timmins, it gets lost a little bit, but it may, uh, in effect, be uh, coming up and it gets stopped by the capris casing high. So long and short of it, the main breaks are important, but so are the splay breaks. Most gold mines, most significant gold mines, are associated with these breaks, as I've already said, or along splays off of those breaks. And there's also another uh, element that becomes important too, but let, we'll go on to that as we get on to the property. So what's happened here? Here's the, here's the Cadillac Lard Lake break going through Metachuan. It gets buried underneath this cobalt sedimentary, sedimentary rock. It's presumed going through here. And then here it's coming across from the Cody Lake West or the over the Swayze Belt. You've probably heard of the Cody Lake deposit. It's a big uh, uh, open pit 
Cambrior has it now. Uh, multi million ounce, uh, multi hundreds of millions of tons, uh, low grade, uh, high tonnage, mm -hmm. open pitable. So it's over in the, and, and there's a bunch of, of, of in the uh, South Swayze belt, there was also the old Jerome mine, and these were mines that were underground mines that went after the veins in the early days, just like they did in Kirkland Lake and Valdor and all these, and, Kirk, and, and, and Timmins. Now they're into open pits, just like the East the Canadian Malartic mine, and the big uh, dome open pit, super pit, the Hollinger super pit in Timmins, et cetera. They're going after this in a larger, larger scale. Anyway, long and the short of it, this is called the, the ride out shear or the ride out brake. And they think that the Lard Lake brake, Lard Lake Cadillac brake, and the ride out brake are one of the same. And it certainly looks that way, but we have, we're have we disrupt, disrupted by intrusive bodies that are coming in, large uh, intrusive bodies that have come in, also covered by the overlying Proterozoic cobalt sediments, which are younger rocks on top of the Archean. Uh, so we lose, we lose continuity of seeing it in a lot of places. But this is probably the same thing. Now, when you get down to where, where we're working here on the, just south of the Terrell shear, that's a shear off that break. And it's a, there's a number of shears that are coming off that break on a northwest trending orientation. And that's what becomes important because even in along the main breaks where there's major camps like the Kirkland Lake camp, the Dobie mines at Dobie, Upper Canada, Upper Beaver, um, a lot of the stuff that's in around the uh, Timmins camp itself uh, are off to the side of these uh, on other shears. So it becomes important. Even the satellitic shears that are coming off the main breaks they're all prime targets for exploration. So uh, when you get down into the area that we're working in with iMetal, uh, it becomes important because those, those things are, are, are uh, indicating uh, some relationship between the major breaks and the secondary shears and faults that are coming off of that. So they become important.